Before we begin, if you care about real field-tested history that actually mattered to survival, make sure you're subscribed to The Prepper Historian. This channel exists for people who don't just want dates and names, but want to understand how past societies solved brutal, real-world problems we still face today. What I'm about to walk you through is one of those solutions. Quiet, overlooked, and far more sophisticated than most modern builders realize. Now, here's the hook, and stay with me for this. The Vikings lived, worked, slept, and raised families in some of the harshest wind conditions in the medieval world. Northern Atlantic storms, constant coastal gales, sub-zero winters, and no modern insulation. And yet, archaeological evidence shows their homes were often warmer, calmer, and more wind-resistant than many early modern European structures that came centuries later. That wasn't luck. It wasn't brute force. It was design. Specifically, a wind-blocking wall system that controlled airflow instead of fighting it head-on. This knowledge sat quietly in ruins and sagas for centuries, dismissed as primitive, until researchers began reconstructing Viking longhouses and realized just how intentional these walls really were. The reason wind was a greater enemy than cold itself is where the story really starts. Vikings understood something modern survivalists learn the hard way. Wind strips heat faster than low temperature alone. In Norse regions, sustained wind chill could kill livestock, rot stored food, and turn a hearth into a liability by sucking warm air straight out of the structure. Their solution was not thicker walls everywhere, but smarter placement, layered barriers, and controlled turbulence. The Viking wind-blocking wall design worked by breaking wind before it reached the living space. Longhouses were rarely exposed directly to prevailing winds. Excavations show consistent orientation patterns with the narrow ends of buildings facing dominant wind directions, while the long walls ran parallel. But the real secret was what sat outside and within those walls. Low external stone walls, turf embankments, and sometimes even earth berms were built several feet away from the main structure. These weren't defensive walls. They were wind breaks. By forcing wind to rise, curl, and lose velocity before hitting the house, the Vikings reduced pressure on the main wall and prevented cold air from being driven inside. Inside the wall itself, layering mattered more than thickness. A typical Viking wall wasn't a single barrier. It was stone at the base, timber framing in the middle, and packed turf on the exterior. Turf wasn't chosen because it was cheap, though it was. It was chosen because it trapped air, resisted wind penetration, and absorbed moisture without letting drafts through. Wind hitting turf loses energy fast. It doesn't bounce, it dies. That's physics, not folklore. What makes this especially relevant today is how adaptable the principle is. You don't need to live in Iceland or build a longhouse to apply it. The first practical lesson is wind mapping. Vikings observed their land for years before building. They knew seasonal wind shifts. Modern survivalists can do the same by simply noting wind direction over time and placing wind-blocking barriers upwind of shelters, cabins, or even garden beds. A simple earth berm, stacked firewood wall, or dense hedge placed several feet away from a structure can cut wind impact dramatically. Another overlooked feature was the Viking use of offset entrances. Doors were rarely placed directly facing prevailing winds. 
Many longhouses use short entrance passages or angled doorways that force wind to change direction before entering. This prevented gusts from flushing warm air out and smoke back in. Applied today, this means building mudrooms, vestibules, or even tarp corridors that act as wind traps instead of open doors that invite heat loss. The interior layout also worked with the wind blocking system. Hearths were placed centrally, not against external walls, and roof vents were carefully sized. Too large and you lose heat. Too small and smoke builds up. The Vikings tuned these openings to maintain airflow without creating drafts. This balance is directly applicable to off-grid cabins and emergency shelters. Controlled ventilation beats sealing everything shut, which often leads to moisture build-up and heat loss anyway. What's remarkable is that none of this relied on advanced materials. It relied on observation. Wind doesn't move in straight lines when obstacles are placed correctly. Vikings shaped airflow the same way modern engineers shape aerodynamics. They just did it with stone, sod, and patience. Experimental archaeology has shown reconstructed longhouses using these methods maintain significantly higher internal temperatures with less fuel compared to poorly oriented modern structures. For preppers and survivalists, this knowledge matters because fuel is life. Any system that reduces heat loss, reduces firewood consumption, exposure risk, and labor. A wind-blocking wall doesn't just make a shelter more comfortable. It extends how long you can survive with limited resources. That's not theory. That's proven by centuries of Norse survival in environments that killed unprepared settlers repeatedly. The tragedy is that much of this knowledge was dismissed as primitive once industrial materials arrived. Brick and concrete replace turf, but without understanding airflow, many newer buildings perform worse in harsh climates. The Vikings didn't build pretty. They built to live. If you found value in this breakdown, Share it with someone who still thinks survival history is just trivia. Subscribe to The Prepper Historian for more deep dives into forgotten systems that kept people alive long before modern conveniences. This knowledge was paid for in blood, cold, and time. Let's not lose it again.